Engineer 775 here. I wanted to talk to you about a project I was recently involved with and it'll actually be airing uh, this Tuesday. The reason I'm doing this video is doubtful that any of the cool stuff I did makes it in the video. <laughs> um, anyway, it's on Doomsday Castle, Tuesday night, 10 o'clock, and uh, I was tasked with finding water on the property and then delivering it to the castle. And in an off-grid fashion so and the, the challenge that I was given was to take existing um, equipment um, and repurpose it uh, making spring boxes and spring collection systems out of uh, things around the castle 55 gallon drums containers just uh, components that I could repurpose uh, solar panels that hadn't been used in 12 years things like that just what could we take that was already existing and develop a water system that would be sustainable for the folks up at the castle. Now, um, from my perspective, uh, it was a great project, very challenging, um, tremendous elevation distances, a lot of challenges to take two springs and tie them together into one and then pump out of that. I put several fail safes in the system, float switches and pressure relief valves. All the boring stuff that you won't see on the show, but what makes a system really uh, sustainable, long, a long runner, and without problems. So um, anyway, I wanted to show you some of the things I did uh, in this video on that and how it works. And again, the overall goal was to pump water from a deep valley, about 300 foot in elevation down, and then pump it um, 700 feet to the final destination so that water would be delivered for their gardening and you know, obviously for, for being able to live there. So anyway, um, check it out. I have no idea. I haven't seen any cuts. I don't know what they're going to do. If they're going to make me look like an idiot, um, I hope not. But uh, um, anyway, my part was to design a system, find water, deliver it for the show Doomsday Castle. And I'm going to show you some of the things I used. I'm repurposing 55-gallon drums for spring development projects. Taking uh, a drum and turning it into a collection system. Uh, I'm just kind of going to sacrifice this drum here for this project. going to cut the middle out of it in a way that I can use it for the collection dam. And then I'm going to put the, the top and the bottom back together to make the spring box. I've got a bunch of bulkhead fittings I've just ordered. Not here yet, but we'll, uh, it's going to take about six to do a collection system and a spring box. All right, I've cut up the barrel, just went crazy with the Sawzall. And again, this uh, location I might be using these has two spring heads. And I'm gonna take and uh, put these, um, these are the collection systems. And what I'll be doing, I'll show you here is uh, just drilling a lot of bulkhead fittings in this system. And this is what a, this is a one inch with a female thread on the output. I'll be placing that in here. And hooking it up, just male adapters, and then uh, piping from the, the collection system, which will be full of gravel, down to the little spring box I just cut up. So I took the 55 gallon drum and shrunk it up. And all I did was cut it. And you don't need a lot of volume to make a good filter for a spring box. And so this will be how I'll maintain this or any spring head can be maintained with a spring box. And then we'll put the lid in. And that's a pretty good little cover. And that, again, will probably be buried down in, so it won't move, buried down into the ground. And from there, I'm going to pipe off to a pumping station, which is another barrel. You could use a 55-gallon barrel. Now, again, as you move along from your source to your collection, to your spring box, sediment catch, down to a barrel, your pumping station, everything's got to go downhill obviously. So the top of this would be at least level or below the top of this and likewise to the water source up here. So that's what we're about to do. Put some bulkhead fittings in the collection system and then I'll be hooking a, a Dankoff slow pump up to this. Or you could put a submersible in it but it's just it's not a lot of volume but as long as the volume of the spring head is um, beyond the capacity of the pump in gallons per minute then you're in good shape so I'm shooting for at least two gallons a minute more coming into this box 
then the pump can pump so I don't ever worry about burning it up so that's a repurposed 55 gallon drum and making a, a water collection system again try to find um, you know food um, <laughs> 55 gallon drums that have had food in them or um, uh, these were Tropicana had Tropicana um, concentrate in them so we're good and that's it all right repurposing 55 gallon drums for your the springs that uh, will allow you to have a sustainable water source okay I've got the uh, spring box and collection system on site here and we're going to modify another 55 gallon barrel to make it look like this cutting the center out for your collection dam and then building your filtration piping here and then I'll have to uh, have a overflow and a way to drain and clean out this spring box fairly easy and then I'll pipe from that to um, a pumping station so we're just gonna make a couple of these fairly simple very easy to do okay continuing the spring spring box project I just wanted to make sure I had enough water and I'm getting about just shy of three gallons a minute coming out of here so this is just a temporary catch you can do this just kind of make a quick and dirty dam so you can capture the both branches and I just kind of cleaned the, cleaned them out a little bit again this is mostly going to be piped shortly but uh, this is a way to figure out how to um, size your pump and your solar and uh, you need to know the, the volume that the spring is producing and you need to keep an eye on it throughout the year and figure out your worst case scenario. Alright, this is probably one of my hardest installations yet. Pumping water, it will be pumping almost a quarter of a mile when done. And then cough. 1408 48 volt pre-filtering the water I'm doing the best I can to pre-filter it before it gets down to this pumping station from two spring heads that we've developed one on the left and one way up on the right and then uh, just a lot of carrying of some good red clay down this mountain to seal it off and then uh, plastic and gravel a lot of labor in doing a job like this you're fighting the mountain but what you do is you really appreciate the amount of water that goes up you heard the pump go off because it is a cloudy day and so it'll do that and then you'll see more water coming out the overflow because it's not pumping right now so everything's working as planned once you just crank up so do this and there's this pressure relief valve that is working great I've adjusted it to the elevation, so if it does, if this line ever did freeze and the pump had to run, it'd blow it off here back into the stream. So, uh, um, just doing some testing today. Water's still on top of the mountain. Uh, just carrying one bucket of this water up the mountain would kill you. <laughs> or you'd drink the whole thing by the time you get to the top. But this is, uh, this is hard to beat. Uh, so if you got springs and, and hard to get to places, just know that you can run um, your solar about, well, we're 600 feet away with a solar array from this, this location because so you can see the canopy starting to come out, uh, tulip poplars and big old tulip poplars here and maples and leaves are coming out so there'll be absolute darkness in this valley and no way to turn this baby on. So calculate your voltage drops correctly and your wire lengths and your friction losses you can have a system that just works flawlessly for years and years and um, we're gonna come down here and paint some of this stuff kind of camouflage it make it blend in with the scenery because it sticks out like a sore thumb right now okay engineer 775 signing off from uh, my hardest project thus far I guess there was suds in the barrel. Automatic shower. It's fun.